Let's now look at some common parametric probability distributions that are often used. A very common one is the Bernoulli distribution that handles the case of two categories. For example, if we want to classify cats versus dogs in an image classification task. And it's simply defined as p of x equals mu to the power of x times 1 minus mu to the power of 1 minus x, where x is either 0 or 1, depending on the class and mu is the probability for x equals 1, right? And so we can also um, just write this graphically as a histogram where we have the probability for class 0 and then the probability for class 1, which in the case of binary variables, binary random variables must be 1 minus the probability of class 0 because both of them must sum to 1. An extension of the Bernoulli distribution to multiple classes is the so-called categorical distribution, where we have the probability for a particular class x equals mu x, and we must ensure that these mu's, of course, sum to 1. So here's an example of four classes where we have probability 0 0.2 for class 1, 0 0.1 for class 2, 0 0.2 for class 3, and 0, 0.5 for class 4, and if we sum all of them together, we get 1. So these are two examples of parametric discrete distributions. Let's now look at some continuous, some common continuous distributions. Of course, the most important one is the Gaussian distribution, which is math mathematically expressed by this formula and visually looks like this here on the right, where we have the, now not the probabilities, but the probability density function, p of x visualized. The Gaussian distribution is parameterized in the 1D case by two parameters, the mean mu, which occurs here, and the standard deviation sigma, which occurs both here and also in the normalizing constant here. And what we can see, from the picture of the Gaussian distribution is that the distribution has fin tails, which means that as p of x, um, as x approaches infinity, p of x very, very quickly goes to zero. The Gaussian distribution can be generalized to the multivariate Gaussian distribution, which is a Gaussian distribution on um, random variables of higher dimensionality. So let's assume we have a random vector x of dimensionality n, then of course we need to define also the mean vector of dimensionality n. And the mathematical expression for the multivariate Gaussian distribution is here. So it's parameterized by the mean vector that has as many elements, as many parameters as the dimensionality of the input or the random variable that we want to describe. And the second parameter is the covariance matrix, sigma, which is an n by n matrix. And again, the distribution has fin tails as x goes to infinity in any direction, p of x goes to zero very quickly. Here on the right, we see an example for the two-dimensional case, the bivariate Gaussian distribution centered at zero. A distribution that has a little bit less fin tails, which we often call already heavy tails, is the Laplace distribution that doesn't go to zero as quickly as in the case of the Gaussian distribution if we let x to go to infinity. And the Laplace distribution, the Gaussian distribution has a, has a square here, right? So if we take the logarithm, we have a, a square function. In this case, we have no square, we have an L1 loss here. So this is the mathematical definition of the Laplace distribution and this is what it looks like. It is more peaky at zero and it has heavier tails. But it's also described by two parameters in the one-dimensional case, mu and the scale b. So similar to the Gaussian distribution where the standard deviation determines the spread, 
and mu determines the center. Here we have also mu determining the location, which is the center, and b is, is the scale, also the spread of that distribution, if it's narrow or wide. We can also model mixture densities, of course, um, by combining, by doing a, um, a weighted combination of multiple parametric density functions, in this case a mixture of Laplace distributions, where we see that here on the right hand side we have the formula for the Laplace distribution, but we have now m Laplace distributions that are linearly combined with this weights, um, weight of each mode pi m. And the constraint for these weights is that these must sum to 1 as well. So we can model multimodal distributions like such.